last second shot right on on hey, time everyone on. welcome to another episode of romero pictures heavy metal indie brigade presents the wagner wiles with lance and sam wagner and their new co-host of course tyler, tyler shay cone you yeah. so, i will allow you guys to do your thing give me a holler if needed okay you got it thank you joe it's happening. Where's Tyler? Got my spacing effect shirt on. Hopefully, it's there I am. Where's Tyler? Tyler. Oh. Wait, right on time. So yeah. punctual. I got. It. <laughs> you were so <laughs> careful. <laughs> oh, hey, check it out. You ready for this? I would have been on in an hour. Look at this. Oh, what'd you do? You printed that out? Yes. Wow. Tyler starred in Ron Purdy's short horror indie horror. I guess indie horror. Yeah, yeah, indie horror. I'll be oh, right behind yeah. you. Oh my. I'll be right behind you. I'll be right behind you. It is so good. Check it out. It's on YouTube. Ron Purdy and Tyler knocked it out of the ballpark with that one. Thank you, man. It was that was a lot of fun to do, actually. It was it was fun to work with Ron. And um, you know, we it was it was funny because we were talking so much before we did it, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm a little bit concerned now because uh just a little bit because you know it's it's an emotional scene. And so am I, am I pulling myself out of that emotional space, you know, just bantering back and forth with Ron. But once he was like, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Like it was really easy for me to get back into that space. And he was, he's a great director and he just kind of slid me right back in. And once we started, I mean, it was, I was on it. For everybody paying attention, Ron Purdy's channel on YouTube. You can see it. Seven minutes of your life, you will totally enjoy it. I think there's links on all of our pages, too. Yeah, I think I've watched it. it. I've shared it a hundred times. Yeah, I think I have like seven links. Four of those came from Lance. (laughs) It's really good. (laughs) He's doing his job as president of their fan club, right? right. Oh, (laughs) oh, oh, real quick before we rock Steve on, look. So Clegg can suck it. You're my BFF, so you're going to track. Yeah, just like the amplifier, right? See, two and eleven. Brian, Brian Clegg, some of that <laughs> little hooker. That's right. You uh, rock, Ron. Oh, there's Ron. Ron. Yes, awesome. Oh, there's there's hey, Gunny. Hey, Gunny, how are you? Okay, so we're doing a musical. Th- this is basically um, Mr. Tyler Shea Cohn's idea too, so to do movie soundtracks and scores. And we have recruited two heavy hitters for this one: the two Grays, no relation, <laughs> right? No relation. Steve and Rocky Gray. Joe, could you please? And they're not related. They're not, not related. related. There's Rocky and there's Steve. It's so hey, awesome. Hey. Hey. Okay. And what we what they, we agreed on is all, all everybody on screen will pick three of their favorite musical scores, soundtracks, whatever. And the person off screen. And then Joe's got a couple. And then we'll take some from the comments because I'm sure we're all going to miss something and Everybody's gonna go. How could you possibly miss? So that's the cool stuff. That's yeah. Cool we fact. want comment. We want comments for sure. For sure. Total interaction. So is so. I'm gonna make a joke here. So as Tyler and I do this to our screens, <laughs> it's not because we're not paying attention. It's because the screen got further and further away. I'm gonna light myself up just a little bit. A little she's tough. she's uh, wow. she's already tipsy. I am not. Yes, yeah, she is. She's already tipsy. Do I look stable to y'all? <laughs> He looks stable, but <laughs> someone says hi, Rocky. Oh, that's Hello. cool on the YouTube side. Very cool. Okay, so how do we do this? How, how are we going to do this? I don't know. Ladies go first. Ladies go first. Oh, talk. Yes. Okay, so wait a one... second. Oh, here we go. What? What's up? Oh, we didn't give any. any... <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh, we forgot the biggest part, guys. Y'all got to introduce yourself. That's right. Who sorry. Are you? Where do you come from? Sorry. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm tipsy so too. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Rocky, Rocky, go ahead. Let's go with Rocky. Rocky, hey, Rocky Gray here. That's right. Uh, I do stuff. <laughs> you do a lot Next, of cool stuff. All right. <laughs> Hi, sweet Amy. What stuff do you do, Rocky? I do uh, uh, video games and uh, actually just uh, Killing Floor Two video game and um, and horror movie soundtracks. Okay, so uh, on the, on the video games, you do the music, or you actually create the video games. I do the uh, the music, the music for the video games, and you also do soundtracks yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah. do you do a musical score, or um, do you do songs specifically for the games and for uh, 
and, and hopefully I'm making myself clear a little bit. So, you know, you have the score that kind of goes along with scenes versus like in the crow, all the different songs that just kind of. Right. Right. You know, so basically what, what happens is they'll be like, okay, we need a, we need an action uh, track and then we need like an ambient track. And um, uh, sometimes it'll be, okay, we, we need a track just for the ad. So it'll be like we need kind of both in one song uh, so they can use uh, parts for if they want to use it for the main menu and things like that. They can take that from what's in the ad, things like that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it could be a straight up metal song or a straight up just ambient, you know, sound design type thing. And so, what uh, what equipment do you use doing the, the music that you're making? I, I, my DAW is a studio one, three professional. Okay. Cool stuff. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and nice. then, uh, Mr. Steve gray. Yes. Tell us you? about yourself. Good man. How are you? Good. To, good to meet you. You too. Tyler Steve. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do? What do oh, you do? Yeah. Steve? <laughs> um, primarily a bass guitar player. Um, I'm in a punk band called the U-Boats that have been around since 1979. Wow. Um, what? You don't look oh, yeah. like you could be doing it since 79. You've oh, been yeah. in the punk band since 79. No. Well, 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 I've You're not been. He's joined the band. He's joined the band. They've been around <laughs> okay. since 1979. Like, Steve, I want what you're doing, like, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, th thanks for that. I appreciate that. But yeah, no, I just joined these guys like three years ago. We've been jamming on and off again. Shout out to Mike, Mike Nelson, all those guys, you know, like we, we crank it. Um, but I also do my own solo stuff. I got music on uh, Amazon Music, Tidal, Deezer, uh, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, that's where I've been busy lately. Uh, but also do horror score, just like uh, my man Rocky over there. I've heard some of his stuff. It's fucking bad ass. Love it. Thank, Killer thank work, you, bro. Man. Thank you. Thank um, you. But yeah, just trying to, yeah, I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. <laughs> okay, so you got your band. You yes. uh, you also do the, the musical score. And when you, or you, you do score, right? Did I get that right? Yes. Yes, I okay, do. Okay, so when you do that, I mean, obviously you're doing other instruments than just bass. Yes. You're not just yes. focusing on your bass. You're doing probably synthetic or synthetics synthesizer. No. Well, I guess. Yeah, I guess that could be. But my mainstay is the cello. Oh, man. oh nice. Yeah. I played the cello gonna, in fifth grade. Great fifth sixth grade. That'd be great for her. Exactly. Right. It's pitch. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect, which is going to tie into my. Um, one of my choices for the three yes, tonight. Yes. You, you just can't beat the. You hear that? That's awesome. It almost yeah. sounds like one of mine. It does sound like one of yours. Wait. Oh, one of the ones that you picked. Unless you I picked, thought. yeah. We'll okay. find out shortly. One of the ones we picked, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I do. I just, <laughs> you know, I'm just doing what everybody else is trying to do. Just get noticed, you know. Awesome. So Rocky and Steve, and let's let's go ahead and start with Rocky. Um, Oh, wait, actually, are we supposed to talk about ourselves here, Lance and Sam? This is my first time to be your actual. No, you go. You oh, feel free. Know. Everybody knows everything about us. Lance puts it on Facebook every second. Okay, I can roll in. Okay, sweet. So let's start with you, Rocky. Um, when you are thinking about music, um, do you have just layers and layers of, of uh, music theory, knowledge, an experience that you apply to this or do you go with more of a feeling towards what you're saying? Cause I assume the, the, like the footage has already been shot. So you're yeah. watching the footage and then you're trying to determine what music is going to go along with this. Do you apply music theory or do you just go with a feeling of what you think this should sound like when the audience sees the scene? I, I go with the, uh... <laughs> What might feel right? Your feeling, okay. Because I, I, I can't apply theory because I don't know anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, with it, you know, so I just, I just go with it. Same way. I mean, a lot of those guys, like you know, you look some of the best, best musicians. They all go by the feeling. They all go by the sound. They don't necessarily apply 
the 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 music theory and and with a lot of horror and one of my choices which we'll get into a little bit later has a lot of musical dissonance meaning yeah, yeah. that it's the notes that just don't go together but it creates right. this really tense yeah. um moment in that scene and so you you clearly just by the feel of it find that dissonance correct yeah absolutely okay. and tempo and things like that that's that's all coming from what's on screen. So the actors for me dictate how fast or how slow things go. Um, a lot of times that will dictate if it, how low things will go, like how, how low notes will go. And, um, you know, any yeah. of that kind of stuff basically to me uh, is all dictated from picture. Uh, okay, so what try to go with it from that. Okay, and so you'll de you'll determine tempo, speed, everything, and then also how high or low those notes go. Yeah. So um, I'm, if, I'm if I can, so, sometimes there's um, <clears throat> suggestions already there. Like here, here's what I'm thinking for this from di the director. We'll kind of know what he's going for, and and I'll have a, a cue sheet with you know I, I'll try to have the director give me as much information as. I can get from them. So I, so I know I'm on the, on the right track at least, you know? Okay. Um, so I'm and not totally, I, I, some directors are like, I trust you go with it, whatever you think. Others will, will, will kind of know what they want. So I, I want to know what they want if they, if they know, and that makes it easier for me. That way we're not doing a lot of adjustments after the fact. So, so they'll um, basically say something like, I want it to sound a little bit like this. Yeah, song yeah. Or, I want to know up front. Do you want give some sort of a comparison synthesizers, or do you want orchestral <clears throat> stuff? Cello. I I need to figure out what kind of palette I'm going with because <laughs> if I'm on the <laughs> right, <laughs> I mean yeah, I I got, I got to know I'm on the right track. Otherwise, I mean it's just going to be a a problem later. So I try to fix all that in the beginning and try to feel things out. And if I have a script, I'll just go from that sometimes i mean i've done i've done at least one movie you know starting with like eight tracks just from the script oh, and wow. you know and that was close calls yeah um, i was about to say yeah. that has to be because yeah. love you know, close calls. Director, yeah. director can take <laughs> love it close calls. and still not be able to uh, like really um explain the the tone that they want with that script yeah. and so you're taking that same script and then you have to somehow meet that director somewhere yeah. in the gray area of you know both of you kind of have to meet which is it's kind of a shot in the dark yeah yeah i mean the the, the l lucky thing for me working with the directors that, that i've been fortunate enough to work with is we speak the same language so we're kind of uh, in the right direction from the beginning. So right. we know, you know, um, like close calls us it, from the beginning, we know there's going to be this Italian influence and, you know, you know, with the lighting and things like that, what, what he's going to go for and the, the feel of the thing, I got the script knowing those things. I'm like, okay, so I'm like channeling my uh, Fabio Fritzi, you know, vibe, uh, and I'll go from there. And then we're on the right track already. So I'm into like eight songs before I even see the picture. That's awesome. Um, wow. and, and, and being on the right track. So that, that helps being on, on the right track from the beginning. That's awesome. Okay. And then Steve, let's move over to you real quick. Uh, kind of the same question. Do you, do you apply more theory or do you also do the same thing where you look at um, just the, the, the 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 footage and then determine where you're going to go from there based on what you're looking at just from a from a gut feeling of where the music should be as an audience member right yeah well it's all feel for me you know i don't it read is. music okay. I, I get kicked out of jazz band in high school because i don't read music you know i don't get taught I, I never got taught what i do you know it's just all about feel to me and um it's just whatever's handy you know whatever i can use to make a sound and you know and okay. especially in horror film, you know, it's like, I, I don't, I can't think of the guy's name, but the person who did the music for Cube and also The Witch, the, the new movie, The Witch. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Mark Coven. Is that right? 
there you go. That was Rocky, right? That was Rocky. Yeah, yeah that was Rocky. 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 Thanks a lot. Yeah, <laughs> thanks yeah. for the backup on that. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't think of his name, but yeah, it's all about he he. And matter of fact, he had this. He commissioned somebody to create this machine called the uh, 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 Nightmare Machine. I think that's what it was yeah. called. Yeah. Where it's got all these crazy little things that he can do these creepy sound effects and all that kind of stuff. Cello strings. You know, it's cool. cool. Are those sounds um, in a particular key? It doesn't matter. You know, it's just whatever. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, whatever. I mean, I guess it could make a difference, but um, it's whatever invokes the mood. You know, right. like when you're when you're watching a scene, you know, and and something it, it's designed to unnerve you. You know, yeah, that's what I do. That that's my goal in making okay. horror film music is something that's going to unnerve you. It's going and to would that be some of that feeling, you know, and I'm going to use whatever I can to make that happen. Okay. You know? okay. Uh, whether it's something in garage band or whether it's like a piece of strip metal I found out in the backyard. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and the, and move, the use, movie magic. Yeah, exactly. Movie and I magic, love yeah. that too. Um, you know, I, I think that I remember watching, a long time ago, uh, st something about Star Wars and how they had the sound of the, uh, the, the, the laser guns, you know, and it was like they went out to these um, large telephone towers that had these these uh, metal the wire. Yeah, the metal they wire. Tapped, they, they tapped like, on they, it. And they right. tapped on it. And that was the <laughs> yeah. sound. Like the sounds can be anywhere. <laughs> yep. But I just wonder if, so if you take a movie like, say, The Mission, uh, beautiful music. And in my opinion, I think the theme from The Mission is one of the best theme songs ever. But that was The Mission. And then you also have love stories. You have comedy and everything. And so then when you get into that horror um, genre, I wonder if you have a little bit more freedom with creative sounds, because again, like I, I keep on saying with that dissonance, anything that, that is uncomfortable, you know, like in Texas Chainsaw, it's that screech, um, you know, in Jaws, it's that, you know, and so uh, there's, there's just so, I feel like there's more, there's more freedom in horror yeah. to just kind of come up with anything creative that just sounds creepy. Right. Well, it's right. ethereal, you know, it's like anything can happen in a nightmare, you know, so it really doesn't, there's, the rules don't apply, you know, theory doesn't really, in my opinion, anyway, rules don't apply in horror, it's like anything that's gonna make you feel creeped out, that's, that's what goes, you know. And those things that make you feel creeped out, and I just saw um, a comment from Terry about the uh, screaming violins and psycho, <laughs> Yeah. There's, yeah. There, there's, yeah, there, there, sure. there are certain, and it's not even an entire song, but it's just these sounds <laughs> that last for decades. We all recognize literally, yeah, when you hear that we recognize them, and it's not. I mean, somebody just came up with some sort of a sound that just stuck with it, and it's not even a sound that really takes you out of the movie because when you're watching yeah. it, it's more hitting you emotionally than yeah. visually, and so you're still. You're still engaged in right. the film, but that music is somehow like pulling at your strings at the same time. Whereas I'm sure that there's been a lot of films out there where somebody has put in music thinking that it was going to be really great at this time, but then the audience might be like, I noticed the music. Like, right. you know, it's kind of. That's a big thing for me in movies. <laughs> well, just is like the Halloween song. I don't want to oh, hear the yeah. music, I don't want to know I'm hearing it. I want to be after thinking, hearing a soundtrack was like oh that was in there but then it evoked a feel it oh i do remember what part that was in but i don't want to hear the music because it distracts me from what i'm watching right exactly you the the, the last thing you want in any movie is any sort of distraction whether it be sound foley mm -hmm. music um acting uh lighting any of those kind of things and music i think is one of those one of those things where it seems to be so difficult to a degree to where it's almost scientific because you really you you want to ev evoke that emotion, but you don't want to take away. Right. You know, you have you're you're always on that fine line, and so both of you know Rocky and Steve, both you guys, 
in whatever you're doing have to constantly be aware of that i assume right <laughs> I'm very aware of it, and I and I I break that rule all the time. I'm, oh, you do? I, tell tell us go, about man. it. I want I want the stuff to to burst out of the speakers at you. <laughs> but the bursting yeah. out of the speakers and still being in that moment and in that scene is yeah. different. It's got to work for the not for, for the, the movie. scene. And you're like yeah, like why don't wait? Why I, am I, I thought Blade those? Runner twenty forty nine was amazing. I thought the I thought the sound was a character. Plus, we saw it in Dolby. So yeah, to me, Dolby. Blade Runner twenty forty nine just that the a, a character is the sound in that movie. It's amazing, right? right. Yeah, but hey, we got to we got to get in our picks because this is gonna. Are we, are we gonna do all three? Like she'll do all three. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, all three are all one at a time because we do, may be over. Some people may agree. Okay, so my first one, and we've all heard it, is the cello. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Just yes, it is. there it is. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> Every time you get into the beach or into a pool, do you not sing that song? Whether you see a Jaws or not, do you not feel <laughs> oh, I'm there's not something Jaws? coming to get you? Yeah. Yes. Why are there so Why are there so many shark attacks? I like, can't people hear the fucking music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> get plenty of warning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I watched a documentary, or I watched somebody talking about the making of Jaws, and I think they made like four or five. 20 for all that matters different jaws that kept breaking and so yeah. they had to rely on music to, really to make you. the feeling because they didn't have an active or real jaws working to film the show or the movie so sorry so sure. it was like thinking back okay when because i didn't pick horror shows i picked other things and then these two guys were like it needs to be horror related so <laughs> okay jaws as i don't agree is considered in the horror genre. Horror genre. So I said, okay, that's going to be mine because nobody gets in the water now. <laughs> because that's yes. without that or Piranha, the movie from the Piranha. <laughs> One of those two, you're going to hear the music for that. And, so, and on on that, uh, one thing that I do like about and and you guys will be able to to understand this a little bit better from a creative standpoint. But what I like about the music with the Jaws is it starts off. Uh, with the tempo being slower, with the shark being further away. But as the shark approaches, that tempo gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And so it really does make that audience member think of like, it's like, it's almost on you, mm -hmm. you know, and just the music alone, just the tempo is all it took yep. to invoke that, <laughs> that feeling of it's yeah. almost here, right. Yeah, you right. know? And it's like when that scene's over, you realize your shoulders are up here when they were way down there. And then when the scene's over, you can finally, oh, I And for all the tough all the kids scenes. nowadays, this is the 70s we're talking about. Yeah. And you didn't, you never saw anything like this. Nobody went to the beach. For all you tough <laughs> no. kids out there. For years. Oh, it does ain't scary. <laughs> That's right. Back you know, the production quality sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of turds. <laughs> no doubt, man. All right. All right, so my next, my the piranha <laughs> was the same kind. So my next one was shocking because I really didn't, I, I, I cared for the movie, but I liked the remake better. But for music, because I didn't like the acting, it was overacted or it was what it was, was the original Suspiria. Yeah, was it, the lighting and the sound to me was everything because, and I just didn't care for the acting in it, but that I was just my that. opinion. So the so the good. music drove every emotion I had in that movie. I teared up watching that movie. It's so <laughs> good. Really, Suspiria? I've never seen. Yes, it. so it's, you up. it's so it's beautiful, man. Okay. It's a beautifully shot movie. Oh, I like part two better, awesome. or not part two, the remake. Sorry. Yeah, it's not. A, it's part not a two. sequel. Okay, and my number Silly. three was. Oh, crud. Uh, it's the movie. You the movie. The what's movie. the movie? Joe can yeah, tell you. Joe's he, he's Joe, got what's my picture, please? I forgot the name. I don't know. I looted all 14 of them at once. <laughs> Here comes Joe. <laughs> it was um <laughs> Joe's in the house. They 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 had the weird nose. A uh, Twilight Zone. Sorry. Yes. Twilight oh, Zone. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. I got oh, the movie. I, I, I had him movie. stuck in my head and couldn't get past Twilight Zone. Love that movie. But yep. twisted and like you the eeriness of when the people's mouths weren't mouths and yeah. just 
everything about every scene, the movie yeah, his sister set the tone for thing. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want to see something really scary? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it all wasn't all yeah. scary enough, you know. But the, it was um Shane Terry. It yes. was invisible. The music was invisible. And yeah, you're right. You didn't it there you just didn't realize there was stuff going on besides what the horror that you were watching. Good job, hey. Good and I wonder, good. you know, um, because it's been a long time since I've seen that movie, but I wonder if I heard something from that movie if I would recall the film itself or if I would the TV show all the emotion that I had when I watched that movie, because that was a very scary, like when, when he, his sister right. turned around and she didn't have a mouth and, you know, I, I forgot how, how old I was at that time, but it was a really freaky scene and the rabbit and all the stuff. And so I just wonder if I heard that, if it would just be like just a creepy, creepy music, or if I'd be able to remember, you know, that from was a cur that was a cursed set too, right? Wasn't that a cursed set? Uh, yeah, because yeah, one of them, the, the accident, there, there, there was a, there was one of the actors was beheaded um, yeah. from a, from a helicopter yeah, that was landing in the, the Vietnam set. Yep. Yeah. Three people. There's two extras. Three Ch people. Ch yeah. Oh Three, wait. Two, so, so the actor two, two, two extras. Kids. He was carrying two, two kids. kids. Oh wow. Yeah. wow! I didn't realize that. Yeah. Whoa. Sad stuff. Yeah. They were kids. Yeah, they were kids. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Timmy. I didn't what mean to bring up. <laughs> hey, I didn't bring up anyone dying. My bad. Upset. My bad. God, family show. Sorry. Fucker. Okay. Did you just fucker me? Because <laughs> wow. I said family show. But, but that is an excellent plug for that Shutter um, series. Yeah. Curse yeah. films. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. Hey, I'll take a free uh, subscription, Shutter. Okay. <laughs> Who? Any, many, money, mo? Who's up? Who's, Who's up? Who's gonna go next? Let's go with. Uh, let's go with Rocky or Steve. Um, One of the Grays. One of the Grays. <laughs> go ahead, Steve. Steve's gonna go. Awesome. Um, okay. All right. Cool. Let's we'll see here. We got. Um, put my specs on here real quick. We got. Uh, <laughs> let's see. My first pick is Phantasm. Awesome. Fred <laughs> Myro. Excellent soundtrack. Very uh, reminiscent to. Well, in my opinion, very reminiscent to. Uh, the Exorcist, you know, with a repetitive. Oh yes, yes. And I got to apologize. I didn't have anything loaded for Steve. I do apologize. I meant to get in touch with you. I got props for mine, Steve. So it's it is what it is. That is you have some. Look, everything's good. It's all good because I got to see that red beard. Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all! The shenanigans I deal with daily, y'all have no idea. Anyway, I, I thought it was a cool soundtrack, you know, the yeah, whole thing, awesome. especially awesome. when it breaks into the, uh, what is it, the uh, disco, where he does like a variation of the theme from the yeah. movie, and it's, it's yeah. <laughs> there oh, you go. There we go. There you go. Um, so was, second, it, was it more of a score or a soundtrack, Steve? It was just a score. It was just score. a score. Okay. Yeah, because there were no additional tunes or anything like that, you know, nothing okay. added. Um <laughs> Uh, my next pick is Bernard Herman Psycho, nineteen sixty. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And I, I know you all. I know you all know why I like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh wait, is that the guy reason? <laughs> somebody's on the spot. Look at that. <laughs> I had that preloaded for somebody else, and that, but that, but but no, let's go with that. So this is all this oh, that's awesome. when it talks do do about. Do 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 do. Oh, that's you know, and, and this is where yes, if you uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. because this uh, this actually talks about the dissonance as well. Oh uh, yeah, right here. This allows for new pitches to be introduced that will further increase the dissonance. And that this breakdown is so genius for bringing that audience into that scene because the, the scene would still be great if you just saw it, you know, um, by itself because it's a very scary scene. But this music is the third character in this entire yes. scene, this entire moment. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and if you, if you, if you listen to the music and watch, like what we were talking about just a few minutes ago, if you watch every scene, the music like totally corresponds with everything that's going on. Every single right. 
every single damn thing from mm -hmm. the part where he's like taking the body and wrapping it up into a, a shower curtain. Everything is like so it's almost like, in my opinion, anyway, Bernard Herman watched the movie and sat there and composed this whole thing and said, OK, yep. Yeah. So, OK, so there's a murder going on, blah, 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 blah. What did you it's it's like he actually tailor made every single note for, right. to that movie you know right and i think one of the earlier questions was would y'all make uh would you pick music based off of an emotion or of what that scene is supposed to make you feel or would it be the act that that person is doing at the time and i think both but that was one of the questions posed um, way up there earlier oh rocky what do you think yeah, what, what I think I think I think they coincide with each other. Like what they're doing and and how that makes you feel is what you try to convey, and and you can foreshadow and not, you know all kinds of things. It's like you know as the composer, I mean, we get to uh, see things in the future that the audience doesn't know yet. So right. I mean, sometimes we can tell you things or not tell you things. Hmm. Um, Right. So I mean, so yeah, I mean, it coincides with each other. You know what's what's happening on the screen, and what we're adding to that. Um, it, it has to it has to uh, be a a good marriage there of music and picture. Right. For me, I'm I'm gonna say one of my oh, favorite look. quotes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Were you gonna say something, Steve? <laughs> Somebody actually commented. Yes, the, my third pick. My third pick. I'm sorry. It's the Devil's Rejects. Nice. That's nice. awesome. That's a, that's a great soundtrack. soundtrack. That's a great yeah. soundtrack. You can't beat it. I mean, that's, you know, I'm a kid from the 70s anyway. So, like, that whole <laughs> soundtrack is, like, totally, you know, rock with the stuff, you know. Yeah. The, the riddled with bullets scene was the one that's just <laughs> putting some Skinner on there was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they slapped some fuck yeah. on it during the whorehouse scene, you know. Where oh, yes. I mean, listen, here, here's where it, this is... Me personally, this is where it became my favorite movie. When they threw on David Essex, Rock On, that's it. Oh, yeah. You got Done. me. Done. Sold. <laughs> the rest Good of the job. movie could have Good sucked job, balls. But... <laughs> 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 that's his Citizen Kane, in my opinion. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Right on. A lot of people concur. Yeah, for sure. That's so, uh, for me, though. We're going to go with another, the, next, the next gray. No, he still had his number yeah, two. Skip to three. No, he got, he got three. Yeah, I got three. Yep. Okay. His psycho, fantastic, fantastic <laughs> oh, that's psycho, right, that's right, that's right. and devil's rejects. So I'm going to say something real quick uh, to to what uh, Rocky was saying, and that is, as a composer, you want to be an artist. And one of my favorite sayings is is if you want to be a good artist, do what you love. If you want to be good at business, do what other people love. And so what you guys are doing is you're artists, but you're not speaking. You're not just like convincing yourself that this is great for this scene. You're you're speaking to an entire audience of potentially millions of people. And so everything that you write, you're not writing because you love it. You're writing because you want them to love it. Right. And so there is that business piece to writing music for films because it's not about you. It's about them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you gotta love it first, you know. Charity starts at home. You know? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> if you if you feel it, if you feel it, Rocky, <laughs> back me up, man. You know. I'm yeah, right. dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, you know, if you if you like what you're doing, and and you felt something like if you watched like John Carpenter's The Thing, which I'm that's whatever. Amazing you heard soundtrack. That, yeah, you heard that, and it and, and it touched music. you, right? You felt it, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. So if you come out that dun, dun, like that, dun dun through the whole movie, dun dun, I <laughs> love that. Yeah, freaking <laughs> love that. But but that's my point, though. You know, if if you can come up with something that's like that, you know, other people are going to like it. You know, absolutely. they're going to love it. You know, yep. yeah. and that's what it's all about. Yeah, but you're you're absolutely right, Tyler. You know, you're doing something for everybody else, but you want to make sure that it's polished before before they hear it. Right, right. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, right, you Rocky, definitely start you, with you. <laughs> we'll go. With, we'll go with the back to back grays. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, number one here is uh, Halloween, uh, 1978. John Carpenter. Yes. Oh yes. Just because we got to start somewhere, might as well start with that one. Absolutely. And, I mean, yeah. I, 
the you know coming up with three it's like okay here's the top one and the rest are just just so halloween's your ultimate number one yeah i mean i'm gonna go with that because that to me that's like the grand granddaddy after um you know bernard herman stuff and psycho i mean that is what it is and that that started everything but as as far as what we're doing today for uh for me it goes back to that as, as much as uh you know bernard herman has an influence on kind of everything we do john carpenter has a huge impact on what we're doing today yep. um so for for me that that's that's my roots right there it, it'll go back to that so we'll start with that as number one that's beautiful so, the goat yeah yeah <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did john did, did he do all halloween he did all of halloween one two and three with alan howarth okay and, and then co then did helped in the uh the, re, the 18 oh 20 i think with, yeah him with cody, and cody, with and, cody yeah. and uh uh, Daniel Davies. Okay. Yeah. Which that's that's an amazing one too. So who, who's I, next? I, did, I didn't put that on the list just because right. it's like I, I mean I could just put a bunch of John Carpenter. <laughs> John stuff Carpenter's stuff. Well, Rocky Rocky still has two more. <laughs> yeah, you got two more, Rocky. Yeah. So yeah, the next one I'm, I'm gonna go with Dead Silence, uh, Charlie nice. Clouser's. Uh, oh wow! Score <laughs> nice. Uh, love that soundtrack. Looks it's creepy. A, it's it's a very it's um, creepy. This is the early like hybrid um, scores where you have lots of lots of programming mixed in with um, orchestral sounds and things like that. So the, so this is early hybrid scoring, which is a lot of what we do today. Is a lot of hybrid scoring. Can you explain um, that a little bit more? So so I, I hear orchestra. But yeah. then you say hybrid. So are you mixing kind of orchestra with MIDI sounds or? Yeah. You, so so like the hybrid thing would be a, say if we take Steve's cello sounds and mm-hmm. and and make a, you know, put, throw it into contact and we can have Steve every play every note on the cello and then every note would be a, a keyboard note. So oh, we can, okay. we can take okay. those and mix it with synthesizer sounds like some analog moog sound or uh moog sound uh anything Mm -hmm. like that just things that that it turns it into something it wasn't originally uh, okay with uh synthetic drums uh lots of synthesis in that in that in that area of taking organic sounds and and synthetic sounds and merging those and making something new with it so yeah the dead silent soundtrack would uh would be Very one of the cool. first ones that that I was like, this is some. I gotta I gotta know how to do some of this. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> yeah. this is I mean I, I things you hadn't really heard before. I mean before that was like you knew everything was a, a keyboard, a, a synthesizer. So note know, to self: see Dead Silence after the Wagner Wiles. Okay. <laughs> oh man, if you haven't seen that, that I, I've seen. It's just, I just stuff. I didn't concentrate on the music <laughs> yeah. probably. Oh and, man. <laughs> and, and and I think uh, so. Sean Smithson just made a comment. He said, "What are your thoughts about Denny Elfman?" And Denny Elfman came yeah. from being a musician go, into doing yeah. yeah into doing scores and stuff. And and I think um, I, I I think that's a really interesting way for musicians to go. One of my favorite musicians, probably my favorite of all time, is John Frusciante. I don't think he's ever done anything in a film <laughs> or anything, but just the way that he creates just from the guitar. But then he's also, he's yeah. put down his guitar where he's gone full on, you know, synthesizers and sounds and all these different things to, to try to create music. Um, I, I, I feel like Denny Elfman kind of did the same thing where he, he just tried to think of different, different ways to make sounds together yeah. versus just, you know, your, your, uh, your instruments. So I, I love I love what he what Danny Elfman did with with his music. I mean, you can you can right you can off the bat his first yeah. movie, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That is yep. his sound. Um, you know Danny Elfman stuff when you hear it. I mean, yeah. unless it's like Transformers or something. He did 
stuff like that, and you probably wouldn't know that was him. But Beetlejuice, when he, when, when, Batman, yeah, when he does just, his thing, it's you like, know it's okay, him. Tim Burton and yep. Danny Elfman. That's yeah, the total, total package right there. That's yep. that's uh, uh, music and picture, like I was talking about, that perfect marriage of music and picture together. That's Elfman did weird science up in Oingo yes. Boingo was really good. Oingo, Oingo Boingo did. Yeah, Oingo Boingo. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hot sex, what, after five? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one more, sorry, one no. more, Rocky. All right, so so yeah. number three is going to be uh, Trick or Treat from Douglas Pipes, yes. which is um, another which one? one of those. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one. That's yeah. Sam right there. Badass. Um, Great movie. So, and this goes right along with like kind of the Danny Elfman things I was talking about, mm -hmm. with, with where he he obviously comes directly out of the you know Bernard, uh, Bernard Herman school. So, you know, of, of loving that style and then he, he makes it his own and Douglas Pipes, I, I think, really did that uh, there, um, which he got the job for this movie by doing Monster House, which is another amazing soundtrack. But you can you can hear Mo Monster House and go, oh, I totally see how he got the trick or treat job, you know, yeah. it's, right. <laughs> he created really something, something special with that. Oh, so that's nice. Yeah. I, I was about to, if you don't mind my saying, the I was two trigger mention, trigger know, treats. Yeah, the <laughs> trick or treat from the one that Gene Simmons and Ozzy oh, Osbourne yeah. was in. Right, in right. Six, I think it was. That was a pretty fast, badass the fast soundtrack. Way soundtrack. Yeah, fast way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at Joe. Joe had to come in. <laughs> yeah, he did on that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one Joe was <laughs> hoping for anyway. Thing, yeah. <laughs> no, I He's love that soundtrack too. I, I love that one too. Oh, yeah. There are there, there and there are certain musicians that I um, Shane Terry made just a comment a few minutes ago that I I would love to see certain musicians move into oh, Trent, movies Trent. Trent Reznor and and actually yeah. I know Trent Reznor has done a lot of work on movies and I know he did a soundtrack for uh, American Horror uh, Story did he do American Horror Story he did the intro music for I think season one. Okay. Okay. Murder so house. he has done that work, but he's one of those guys like Denny Elfman, like, you know, where who knows what he could do with fast way, uh, Ron Scott. <laughs> oh yeah. Cash on this, Ron. That's right. That's right. Back to Badass, school. Man, major, hey, all, all I can think of is him doing that little diving thing at the very end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Ronnie, no respect. Your turn, Tyler Shacone. Is it my turn? Okay. That's right. Uh, I'm gonna go last. Uh, so we already talked about Psycho. That was one of mine. Uh, one that is a... So I, I look at things between score and soundtrack. And I really liked Bram Stoker's Dracula for score awesome. because yeah. it, it, was, it was treated almost like a Broadway uh, or, or a musical in the sense that every scene had... And here you go. You have yes. all the way through yes. this. You know the, the 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 different parts of the movie, and it's just broken down in a musical format. And I love. I mean, that was when I was younger. Um, I used to drive around Texas in my Jeep with the top off, listening to the score of Dracula. Yes. That's awesome. Which is probably really weird for a lot of people that drove by me at the time. <laughs> like, what is this guy listening to? <laughs> but I just I loved musical scores. I love scores. Um, yeah. And then the other the other one is uh, I really like the crow. I like the crow. Oh, oh, yes, so yes. I mean, with nine inch nails and with Stone love Temple Pilots and uh, oh my God, you talk about a score. I I loved just. I mean, I could listen to this entire thing from front to back. Like, it wasn't well, like I'm going to skip this and skip this. I just listened to everything. Great. And still to right. this day, I will, you know, go to the gym and do a workout and just listen to the entire soundtrack. Just <laughs> love it after all these years. Uh, and then the last one is... Um, Someone just had sex with that new show. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody shocking, had, uh, shocking! Somebody, Keith would say something like that. <laughs> oh, I've done that too. <laughs> wow. TMI. Take a shot if you've had sex. Uh, it's a Dracula. Too. Uh, 
And then the last one, Joe, if you can, oh, <laughs> Lost Boys. Yes, yes. yes. You're wrong. Nothing the else yeah. but the sax player. I mean, come on. <laughs> Nobody would even know what a saxophone is if it wasn't for this guy. That's right. This was. <laughs> it hasn't aged well, but there it was real back then. I could totally see Brian Clegg doing this picture. <laughs> That's Brian Clegg right there, I think. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> But no, Lost Boys, Lost Boys soundtrack I thought was good. You know, it, obviously it wasn't a score or anything like that, but it just for for whatever reason it just kind of hit that that genre or it 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 hit that um Scotty. the 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 people of that time, you know, with the music and everything and uh I the the music itself doesn't really do much for the movie, but when the soundtrack is something that people are out there buying along with the movie, it's just going to help, you know, promote that movie. So that's why I chose yeah. that one. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Bad Solid ass. pigs. Good stuff. Bad ass picks. Uh, that, that, that's a good cue for you to stand up. Oh, Maybe? for Scotty? Yes. For Scotty? For Hold on. Oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> the spacing effect. Spacing effect. Check the spacing effect out if you can. Are awesome. Spotify. I bought their album on Google. <clears throat> and Scott Scotty Busey's in the spacing effect. So that's a band. Yes. Cool. Very good stuff. They were on the an earlier uh, episode of uh, Romero Pictures Any Brigade, right? One of the first few episodes, Joe. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Wait. Good stuff. Um, not finding it. Let me do my picks. Yeah, but to mention one, I didn't. King, we got honorable mention. We'll have honorable King mention. Kong. King Kong. Okay. The original, like way back in the 30s or whatever it was. Because remember back then you didn't have like that might have been when music first started getting put with black and whites kind of thing. I don't know. But yeah, the first talkies. Yeah, no doubt. So you didn't whoever thought of putting music and people together in a movie. So well, I, maybe I, way I thought, back then. And that's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's been a lot of evolution with music and movies, but there was that time where they were trying to figure that out. And, right. uh, you know, it's amazing that a movie that? like that actually pulled it off that early on without all the science and everything behind it. I mean, you have science now in movies regarding color. Mm -hmm. You know, what colors are going to be in scenes? I mean, it almost seems mm -hmm. almost overwhelming to make a movie because if you got to think about music and color and... Mm -hmm. Everything else that goes along with it, you know, but but they were able to pull that off back then. And with King Kong, I mean, that's amazing. Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to I have props for my picks because I had cell phone issues this week and I didn't get my pictures in. What's going so on here, with your beard? Is that a nothing? Man? Nothing. You lost See, head. OK, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what happened. My beard. We have two grays on this screen. That's all we need. We don't need any more gray. We have two grays. <laughs> and no more gray. You have a beard now. Yeah, it's Did you grow that always, yesterday? Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> He's always had it. He just decided today he needed to I'm super update healthy. the gray with my bright red from months ago. <laughs> Glad you just not noticed. You just raid her her cabinets and just pull out. I'm I'm, oh, I'm, this. I'm going back to gray since COVID started. I'm just going to embrace it. So he's just using the oh, yeah. color. Yeah, I got to agree with Gunny. So I'm <laughs> pineapple whips. Whips. <laughs> whips. <laughs> okay, y'all. That's not right. We I'm seriously fine. bought a license oh, plate holder today that has pineapples on it. <laughs> It'll be on my car tomorrow. Oh, that's ridiculous, Lance. Come to Florida. <laughs> I love pineapple. I love pineapple. I'm Here we go. going to, uh, oh, real quick, uh, we, we were talking about the gray. Um, I'm leaving in 11 days to go shoot Butcher's Bluff. Awesome. And all of this is going to be nice. brown. Because <laughs> the script it says somebody in their 30s. Somebody yes. Like you can pull it up. An excuse to color my beard. Let yes. it get longer. It's going to dye your skin. Note to self. And then shave the le the depth you need. But the shorter it is, the more it sticks to your skin. Bill O'Burst was on uh, set yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I shouldn't do this. Why? Because Sam just scared me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do I've it. I've never had a problem. <laughs> well, you, just no, do it. No, I'm saying you color it. But let it grow out, even if it's shaggy, and then color it, and then shave it or trim it to where you like it. I'm leaving in 11 days. He'll get it figured You've got out. plenty of time to okay. let it grow a little longer. And here is Sorry. cosmetology with the Wagner Wilds. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Let's go, Lance. Let's now, my very one. first pick, and there's a theme to my picks with my props. Let's see who gets it. 
Okay. Besides so, Steve. Besides Steve and Rocky, who I've, I've already seen. Okay, there's one of them. Going closer, he can't see. You can see it's probably the 13th 3D. Yeah. Part three, love it. Harry Manfredini, I love it. And I love, the reason why I really love this one is because he took it to the next level. He made it like a disco sound in the opening scene. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that. So here's number two. I'm going to say my favorite for last. Do it opposite of Rocky. And this is, <laughs> can y'all see that one? Nightmare on 33. Yep. And that's with um, Doc, Charles Bernstein, I guess, was the composer, I guess. But then like Don Dockin and or Dockin is. Uh, oh, what is, is that a little toy? Character? Yeah. Oh, he figure. has figurines. He doesn't have toys. They're not toys. Or dolls. Sorry, figurines. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Doc, Dockin's a big, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fan of Dockin. <laughs> yes. Dawkins, yes. George Lynch. Action figure. George Lynch is, about is, to is me off the show. No, no, no. George Lynch is the goat. He works out in Tampa, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. And here's my here, here comes my favorite. This is my absolute favorite. And this is does everybody know what that is? Dun, 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 dun. Leprechaun? <laughs> Halloween three. Halloween three, oh. buddy. You better recognize. <laughs> That is that is the movie. I love Halloween three. <laughs> Tyler's face. <laughs> I think that's I it was Halloween three. I think that's an LMAFO thing going on with Tyler. <laughs> Halloween three rules. That's right. Halloween three is awesome. Thank you. I Thank do you like I do like Halloween three. Before All right, we, down before that we, for us, Lance. That's uh, it's the be the best part about that. I, and I can't. He said his name a while ago. Rocky, Alan, 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 Alan. Yes, I can never say his name. And then John Carpenter helped with that. And that's just the, the whole thing. Kind of like you were saying, Tyler. It, it, as you listen to it, it's like scenes of the movie, and you know exactly which scene from the movie. If yeah. you're listening, if you were listening to the soundtrack, and I just and then plus the goofy song that they from London Bridges, Rocky. Is that what it's? It's from. That's London what Bridges, it's based off of. Yeah. yeah. And my so, brother calls that an earworm, and yes. it's stuck with yeah. you forever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My and wife it is earworms, and and th those are bad. Lance um, gives them as often as he can. He'll post it and say, "Y'all are welcome." I'll be singing that the rest of the day. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> other thing is a phenomena. That yeah. Oh, <laughs> Joe, had, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead, Tyler. No, no, no. You go ahead, Sam. Joe had a couple picks he wanted to do. Yes, Joe. Oh, go, Joe. I, I mean, again, uh, I was talking to Steve earlier, and, and I'm more of the rock and roll kind of guy. And I'm actually surprised that some of these are – I only have two that weren't brought up because I already knew what everybody's picks were. But I, one for me was Shocker. You're going to get lots of love for that. I'm telling and, you. Yeah, I mean, good stuff. Negative yes. Alex Cooper, Soraya. Oh, yes. Joy's bonfire. Nice. And uh, Wrath of, what the hell was it called? Yes. yes. The freaking super band. That Kings of Wrath. Yes. It was Kings movie. of Wrath, I think. Um, damn it. I'm drawing a blank now. Kings of Wrath. Uh, Kings of Wrath were in Shocker. Or they uh, had they had Kings of Wrath. Wrath. What are they? Dudes of Wrath. I think. Dudes of Wrath. You had it on a while ago. <laughs> I it had showed it up clear. But I, Paul Stanley, Alice Cooper. Yeah, uh, right, right. The other person in that movie. They pulled together Freaking just almost like that. Tommy Lee. Type it was like the first super band, and they played music for this soundtrack. Cool. Yep. So that's cool. That, that was one of them. And the other one was An American Werewolf in Paris. I mean, Soundtrack ten times better than the freaking movie. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, <clears throat> from a '90s rock standpoint, I, I thought that was a pretty good soundtrack. Well, who was in? Uh, so I don't remember that film. Uh, do you remember any of the bands that that played on that soundtrack? I do, as a matter of fact, and I actually have it pulled up. Bush, better than Ezra. Oh, Kate, nice. oh my god! Uh, Basketball and a few others. But yeah, well-known bands. Bush rules. I saw a Bush yeah. at uh, Red Rock. This uh, was it last summer or the summer before. I, I actually saw a Bush, Stone Temple Pilots, The Colt, and Nine Inch Nails. Oh and Jesus! One summer the Colt. Yes, man. I'd love to awesome. see a show there. It was amazing. <laughs> love the Colt. We should come out. Well, not right now. Nobody's out there seeing shows because of COVID. But right, <laughs> right. 
but no, it was it was good. Did you say I, I wrote some of them down in the in the comment? We had Hellraiser, uh, Cannibal Holocaust, The Thing, and Escape from New York were some of the ones in the comments. Escape oh, from New York had a lot of dissonance in it. I remember that. Like the music was really, it was, it, it seems to be a lot higher, higher pitched, more stress, you know? John, John Carpenter again. Yeah. John Carpenter, somebody, and I was trying to find their comment. So did John Carpenter, he seemed to be very involved with watching, watching the, the, the movie at the same time as making the music. Right, right. And 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 Rocky and Steve, I mean, it sounds like you guys kind of follow the same practice as well, right? Where you, if, if I can, I definitely. That's how I prefer it. I'd yeah. rather score the picture than just seeing what happens. You know. Now, does music ever give you inspiration for, um, like, do you ever hear somebody else's work and you're like, oh, I would, I would put that into this scene. I would. All like, the time. you ever imagine <laughs> like scenes with the, the reason why I ask is because a lot of my stuff, a lot of my ideas for films or music videos or anything like that, like I love listening to music and putting putting something to it in a picture, you mm -hmm. know, like a film. Like I used to imagine without even ever seeing anybody's music video, I would listen to a song and I would create my own mu music video to their song. Oh, cool. Yeah, very cool. The Exorcist was oh. one of the ones I had written Tube down. With tubular bells. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right. So I they were called the Dudes of Wrath. The Dudes the of dudes Wrath. Of that's, wrath. A, that's what you said a minute ago, right? Okay. Is it? Yeah. I, I, I don't so, Somebody did. I think I said the Dugs of Rap, but. Uh, you know. Clearly wrong. Close. Yeah, it's clear. It's all I right. Mean, you know, Paul Stanley <laughs> so and so close. Al Cooper <laughs> and you know, Tommy Lee. And, <laughs> You know, one of the guys from Van Halen. Ah, it's Which just one? those guys. <laughs> we can never, we can never figure out who was the one from Van Halen. One the Van Halen brothers. It was Nuno uh, Betancourt. That's what you were joking about a while ago, Steve. Yeah. What, was it him? Was it Nuno? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, <laughs> he was in Extreme, I think. Right, but he he did a uh, Van Halen was a third Van Halen though, right? wasn't he? Didn't he do like one album? Van Halen? No, I, I think no, that's this, so. the singer for Extreme. Oh, uh, Sharon, Sharon. Yeah. 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 Gary, Gary Sharon. That's right. Hey, I was just making a joke. I have no idea. <laughs> that's a great joke. It's funny. No you got me. <laughs> no awesome. <clue. laughs> I had abs like Nino once. Edward Scissor's hands was amazing. And I had so many. My list was awesome, but. Then I had to change it over to non. -scary. But, but what, they, what they're not realizing is we were actually doing horror films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. we. She was yeah. doing Top Gun. She goes, I Top Gun was awesome. Before. It doesn't have to be horror. We can do. We can do <laughs> anything. Well, no, that's what it was. That, that now was it's for tonight. It was. Yeah. Yes. It was for horror. Or, when we no, were picking our dreams. I was going to do Phantom of the Opera. The witch that's that's horror. horror. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's it's horror. horror. You know. I think that no. is considered that. I don't think so. In that genre. Phantom. I saw Phantom of the Opera three times. That was yeah. that was pretty amazing. Um, Stephanie, is it Saberhagen? Saberhagen? The silver shamrock theme was stuck in my head for three months. One time. If it happens again, Lance, I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, I'll unlock the door. Just call me and let me know you're coming. <laughs> those earworms are intense. They it's are. A, it's, a, it's a real thing. Like... You know, which is great because you want that as a composer. You want that to be stuck in somebody's head. But do right. you really want it stuck in their head to where they hate you? Right. Steve, Rocky? I'm what okay with that. I'm okay with, <laughs> You're okay with it. <laughs> well, everybody hated Halloween 3 back then because Michael Myers wasn't in it. So now it's starting to get some love now, you know, many, many years later. And the music, I think, is I, I would listen to the sound. I would seriously would just listen to the soundtrack of Halloween 3. It's just that good. Yeah, I do. I, I it's on my Spotify. I I listen to that all the time. It's a great soundtrack. Halloween three is awesome. Thank yeah, you, Rocky. Really you well. I wish I could remember <laughs> the movie, but when we were first, when Tyler first brought this up, and I wish I could remember it. I just I remember ha being at the movies with a girlfriend, and whatever show we were watching, it would bring me to the edge of ugly crying, and then it would take me to stitches where I was laughing so hard. And then the music would take you right back. The next scene would take you right back That's to where you're movie? fixing. The, no, it was Titanic. 
<laughs> it was after that, but probably close to it. <laughs> if she went with me, it was a chick flick because he opts out. But whatever it was, the music, um, um, six feet, six feet apart. It, oh, it was a, a love movie. story. A recent yes, movie. it was a love story, but it also had sad and you know it had all those things. But the music, it you never noticed the music in it, but. It, the emotion that it brought out and the happy and the cracking up laughing and the sadness, it was just amazing. The so way that, it gut wrenched me. And, 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 and that's a good point, Sam. So when, do you know when that, that movie came out? It was oh, be in the last two or three years, two or three. Okay. Because from, from my experience, and maybe it's just because I'm not, I'm not seeing enough. I, I don't, I don't recall hearing any soundtrack or any or seeing any movie where the music really stuck with me as much as it did a decade or two ago. And I don't know if that's because things have just changed uh, to where they haven't put as much feeling or thought into the music or um, am I just missing? Oh, Steve's got something to say about that. I do. It's because everything is cut and paste. All you got to do is download, you know, you can pay a, a dollar amount and download like pre-recorded stuff and cut and paste and organize it like Legos and it goes yeah. together and it's like it, it's without feel. That's, That's one of the reasons point. why I like that guy um, that did Cube. We we talked about him a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Corbin. Yeah, Mark Corbin. Corbin. Yeah, yeah. He 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 did all these things and it's engineered his own sounds. If you don't mind my saying something, there's another composer that I really love. And I'm sure everybody's going to agree. Creep Show Two, the keyboardist for Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't yeah. remember his name. Oh is man, it, uh, is it a uh... <laughs> Rocky? Come on, man, you got to back me up. Rocky's got it in there somewhere. <laughs> it's on the tip of your tongue, man. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't. I, I can't think of it right now. Hang uh, on. But yeah, I'm gonna look it up. I can't stand it. Creep Show Two. Yes. One of the best soundtracks out there to get you moving. Yep. So do you Rick think that part of it could be too that was was it Rick Wakeman? Yes. Oh yes. There you go. <laughs> Dang it. Rick Wakeman. Maybe there you go. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Um, yes. it seems like what I remember from my childhood, it could be from what I remember in movies and when I remember, okay, well, this and I put this with it, besides sounds to movies, because I hear I see. I see pictures or hear stories in sound. Um, we have, you had a lot of, say, a ZZ Top. They people who were already playing music and had records, their soundtracks became part of the movies, even if you weren't really like picking out their sounds. So do you think that's part of it? Is that now you just you make a sound instead of having to use something that's out there available because so much has changed? Did that come out right or did it come out like copyright right well, or like weird science you know either a soundtrack made a band famous or you used a famous band to use their music in a movie to help the movie i totally see what you're saying because a lot of those movies um uh some kind of wonderful um pretty in pink like a lot of those movies from that same time period yes it, it, it did seem to be that they were pulling music into their movie that was already written. Not necessarily that that song was written for that film, but they were like, we like these songs. We're going to pay for those. We're, we're, we're going to pay for the rights to these songs. We're going to put them in the film. And then that just kind of elevated that film to a degree. But those, um, those John I, Hughes I, I movies you name nowadays really have the money to pay royalties for musicians. Because yeah, it, it becomes a licensing. Thing. Thing. That's what, okay. Right. Okay. Right. So now you have to make music, which makes right. like you might remember certain parts of it, but unless you go buy that soundtrack, you wouldn't put all those songs with that movie anymore. Right. Oh, like Days of Confused. Days of Confused had a great soundtrack of songs that were written, you know, back then, back then, you know, during the time that the movie was supposed to be. Right. Um, I, I have a feeling that nowadays, if somebody wanted to do that, the price tag for those songs would be exponentially higher yeah. to a point to yeah. where it just doesn't even make sense anymore. 
Right. I think yeah. back then people were probably like, you know, the market was just, it was smaller and like, yeah, let's go ahead and spread our, our music out. I don't know what happened. I mean, whether it be the food industry or music or anything like that, like everybody has just gotten to a point to where it's like, okay, well, if you want what I have, it's going to cost you a gazillion way dollars. more than you're willing to spend. Right. You know, so go write it yourself. And it has to do with the studios Joking too, because Warner Brothers can get Warner Brothers music. And I mean, it's, for nothing i mean if 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 the writers and publishers are like oh yeah go for it yeah i mean the warner already owns it so sure right yep. it's in the movie so um, the larger sony and thing you know all the all these <clears throat> these uh comp studios like that they can access music a lot easier than everybody else because right. because not everybody has a hundred thousand dollars to license a song. <laughs> if we're going, exactly. it's just not gonna happen. If we're going that far into it, we we do have to show respect to the soundtrack king. Sam's <laughs> <laughs> favorite, oh, yeah. Kenny Loggins, baby. I love it. Uh, he probably uh, as much as he should have in Top Gun or I'm yeah. free. <laughs> I, there's every everything he did I like. Every eighties movie he had a song. Yeah. Yeah. And nineties, I think. Eighties <laughs> and nineties, yeah. Didn't so, he do uh Caddyshack? Was yeah. he Caddyshack? But he did he did, he did some of the songs. Yeah. He really did do a lot. I forgot about that. Yeah. And that's another one like we we're talking about, like Danny Elfman, like where he had he had his own career, but then he moved into in into filmmaking and uh you know started doing music for movies or they just paid him for it i don't know i don't know if he did it for <laughs> right but there but th that does happen i mean some of these Mine guys too, Stephanie. Are old to you know they they they're they're given the movie they're given the, the concept uh, i think lincoln park did it for transformers where they said this is what we're doing and then they went and wrote the song for the movie versus the movie coming to them and just saying hey we really like the song we want to put it in there yeah, and Jimmy Page did it for Death Wish. Remember back in the day? Did he really? Wow. Yeah, he did the music for Death, Death oh, Wish right. 3, I think. Okay. okay. What's up, That's guy? Cool. Yep. That was the big commercial one, Death Wish 3. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. I was trying to catch up on some of these. I know, it's going so fast. So one of my favorite soundtracks <laughs> of all time that nobody probably remembers, but it's all 80s music, basically, uh, Encino Man. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's going to be looking at me like, what? Are those some of your dance moves? I don't know. Do some of your dance moves come from Encino Man? No. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm more, I'm more, I do Lance robot. Lance has dance moves, Sam? Yeah. So she wants to talk about dance moves. <laughs> so, uh, Encino Man, I, I, I'm not. All I can think about is uh, Polly Shore and the Weasel and everything. Like, do you remember any of the bands or uh, any Men the Without Hats? Um, okay. Yeah, it was basically '80s music. '80s music. Okay. It, it was just a compilation CD. Basic is what it boiled down to. But yeah. yeah. But again, they probably, those songs were already made. They went there, they paid them for those royalties and then yeah. put that into the movie, which, you know, back then was a lot easier than it is now. It's I love it. yeah. Eddie and the Cruisers. What is it? Yeah. John Cafferty and the Beaver Brand Band. Yeah. 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 All the yeah. dogs. That's some good stuff. I like what George said, too, because yeah, I was thinking stuff. the same thing, because because uh, Tyler named all the John Hughes movies, and I got to thinking about The Breakfast Club, and The Breakfast Club, I can listen to that front to back. That's yeah. an amazing you soundtrack. Know, that's the move. That's a movie you come on TV. It's, if you've seen it a million times, you're, you're gonna still going to sit down and watch it. Yep. And that's a really good point because that's what I was going back to from what you said earlier, Sam. That was one of those those times <laughs> where music made such a big impact in the movies. Yeah. Right. And somebody made one of the comments earlier: is you could have that's a movie new. that sucked and had great music, and it's still going to sell just because of the music. A lot of movies have been like the. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. And you can have like, like, well, my first movie, one of my first movies was Suspiria. Was like, I the music, I felt the movie, even though I didn't like the movie, I felt it. So yeah, yeah. I think music and Suspiria was freaking awesome. Don't let her scare you off. I'm gonna have to see that. <laughs> Make sure you watch the '77 one and then the remake one, and see. Okay. Tell me what you think of the difference. Both are excellent. But. Kind of like that Lucio Fulci's uh, zombie 
Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing like listening to a porno soundtrack while you watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's exactly what it was like. It yeah. made sense though. It made sense. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, when you're watching it, it's like the context is perfect. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I loved underwater zombies. And you know, it was yeah, fighting a shark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh I mean, what am I? I'm, I'm eating my pop tart watching this thing. Like, what am I watching here? That's a real shark, <laughs> too, Steve. That's a real shark. Yeah. Yeah. They sure sedated. <laughs> Poor guy. Jefferson Starship and Mannequin go together like chicken and biscuits. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ready Player One. I've never seen that. I've yet to see that. You haven't seen Ready Player one. one? I, I own it. It's I own good. it. I haven't watched it yet. Oh. It's back oh, there. You seem to own everything. I know. I own a few. Yeah, there's so many movies out there. I mean, everybody's everybody's listing some really, really great uh, soundtrack from Shining in 1980. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Oh, my God. Yes. Shining, Excellent. 1980. Now, the Shining was tough for me because like, I liked it and I wanted to pick it, but I couldn't pick it because you can have... Uh, movies where um, you might have an amazing actress that she's going to be like the the top actress of your pick, and then you have the most amazing score person. And then is it? I'm going to get it wrong. What, what's the awards? Grammys? The Academy. The Academy. I always get them. Oscars. See, you go to the Oscars, <laughs> and you've got the two top people, and they're like, "I'm not going to win because his music's going to beat me out of overall or whatever," but. <laughs> Sometimes you can have amazing everything, and then you can have the top of this and the bottom of this, and then somehow they still work magical. <laughs> I know it makes sense in my head what I was trying to say. She's pretty. Oh, Ron, Ron, She's Ron, pretty. Ron, Lance has been too busy like sharing a video on Facebook all day to actually listen to any music. That's right. <laughs> Lance That's right. listens watch, to maybe. so much music. Y'all, there's, there's probably as many CDs. We still buy CDs. He still buys CDs. All about physical all media. All the time. And he listens to music nonstop, really, really loud. Yeah. Uh -huh. Huh? I listen to music loud, too. My son. Hey, <laughs> there's Marco Angelo Porta. Um, I, I get uh, my my son is always telling me that I listen to music too loud. Um, my phone tells me that, too. I, you know, the, the, the loudest that my phone goes for whatever reason isn't loud enough. <laughs> I think that's the, the problem with the phone, not me. Right. Maybe right. you need better headphones. Yep. Yeah. I used to go to sleep listening to Metallica with headphones and my parents could hear it in the room next to me and I would have it on headphones and they could hear it and I would That's go to too sleep loud, sir. That. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I know, I know that now. But back then Demon I was Knight, yes. and it didn't really matter. And I'm there, there's gonna... a good one right there. Look at that. Demon Knight. Oh yes. Demon Knight. Like great. Oh, great. Here it is. Roland's fan. Diadems, that's a great one. Anybody connected, to, anybody connected to Nirvana is awesome. So the Melvins were on there. So that's good stuff. <laughs> yep. Can't go did, wrong. Did uh, did Gibby Haynes do anything? Did he do any music for any movies from the Butthole Surfers? For some reason, I'm remembering something from those May guys. Have. May have. Point Break. That would have made sense. It might have been Point Break. All I know is I'm thinking of Pepper right now, That's and right. I want to. Talk to you, so, <laughs> thanks, Tyler. Another earworm. Sorry. <laughs> I actually saw them at the Buzz Bake Sale down here in West Palm. Good show. Good show. Oh, was it good? Excellent, uh, excellent show. Who, Joe? Who was it? Who just the butthole surfers at a yep. bake sale? That's it was a sign of the Buzz time, bake man. Sale. It, it, it's. <laughs> I think it's probably an adult bake sale. sale. It, was like, it was a concert series that they did. <laughs> it was an annual when a, concert series. When, when a punk band plays a bake sale. That's awesome. It, it, I'm, it, think, it, I'm it, thinking it, bake it, sale when it, it I was, heard bake sale. It was okay. a baker's <laughs> dozen. It was 13 bands. <laughs> Now she's thinking get baked. Thinking That's what she's thinking. You're gonna go well, right, listen right. to bands like okay, that. So Everyone's it, gonna be baked. It was a, it was an outside thing, and uh, I can guarantee um, a contact high just by walking up. <laughs> yes, I got one right. And Sean Smithson just said the butthole surfers they were in killer cl killer clowns from outer space. Wow. Nice. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Double S. Judgment Night. Double S. Double S. That's what I call Sean. First name, last name. I wonder why my ears were bleeding. 
<laughs> Omen. Yeah, we talked about Omen. Oh, Judgment Night. Holy shit. Somebody said something about Judgment Night. Cruel Summer yeah. and the Karate Kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like sour cream and chives. David's brain Damon is just is amazing. Who said that? Da Damon. Damon, his brain is just amazing. I mean, as soon as he gets on that BMX bike and heads out to the beach. and <laughs> Someday we got to talk Damon into coming and just spending some time with us. He is a trip. A lot of fun. Y'all, there's no lie. I can text Lance when he's at the corner down the street because I can hear his car coming up the road from his music going in the car. True story. <laughs> It's too loud. I believe that. It's too loud. You're too old. I'm too old. It's too loud. <laughs> but well, y'all want to mention where everybody can find you? Yes. So we start Rocky, right why don't we start with you? Then we'll head over to Steve, and then Lance will tell us that he's either going to be at Taco Bell getting a <laughs> pineapple whip. Everybody knows what I'm. Or he's going to be at Mod Pizza getting a pineapple pizza. We haven't Ooh, had Mod those. since COVID started. Yes. <gasps> Oh my goodness. That's how on the how on the I mean, agenda. I'm even missing it. Yep. Oh. All right, Rocky, where are you gonna be? Uh all the social media stuff is over at uh you can click on all the stuff from uh rocky graycom And uh yes. I, I'm on Spotify. All my latest stuff's on there. I subscribe. Is that <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. So if I go to Spotify because I have a membership with those guys, apparently. I've never been on it. <laughs> Um, so much good stuff you, you on have there. Kids on so the do I just look up Rocky Gray on Spotify? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, Got it. And it's like Facebook. You can follow them and stuff, yeah. or Instagram or have whichever one that is. Spotify follow. is like this. Yeah, you can follow. Okay. Cool. The All right, Steve. Awesome. How about you, man? Well, I just got my job back at Village Inn as a dishwasher, so you might want to come by and you know throw a tip back to the uh, waitress. She'll bring it to me. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, uh, you you can find me on Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, Deezer, Tidal. The title that I recommend you listen to that I'm the most proud of is Promise, and that's uh, with some vocal help from April Love. Uh, Joe originally oh, cool. knows. Joe originally April? knows. And Lance, you guys, yeah, we're friends. You know, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Rich, well, Joseph Art, right there. It's awesome. Yeah, she did the she did the artwork, but yes, uh, Murder of Crows, uh, U Boats. Uh, let's see uh, what else is there. Uh, Viral Panic. Just go up on Spotify, check out Steve Gray. You'll hear all my stuff. Um, awesome. And it's promise. not the best. It's not the best. I, it, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. It's not the best, but if you want to listen to some noise, that's the stuff to listen to. It'll get you through what you're going through at the time. You know, nice good stuff. Oh, Before and by the way, by yeah. the way. Real quick, by the way, I like to do draw pictures and do some graphics for uh, my buddies in the Ender Brigade. Right. I can never <laughs> say that word. <laughs> Steve, Steve did that. Steve's right doing the artwork for our weekly shows. Let me what try that again. Ender Brigade. There you go. <laughs> you got to rock at that time. You know? <laughs> That's right. For the Romero Pictures Ender Brigade, all all the shows, right? He's doing all. Are you, he's doing most of them. He's doing uh, most of it. I mean, sometimes we're just like overwhelmed yeah. and we got to go. Yeah. Bam. It's like, well, okay. If we contact so, yeah, Steve yeah, now. It's 2 a.m. Steve's going to work. <laughs> <be right>. like. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. I'm, I'm totally available now, so I can do all of them. You know, cool. So nice. anytime you need something done, I'm your guy. I'm like awesome. Richard Gere in the American Gigolo, 1979. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can hook it up. Um, oh, oh, oh. And, and one more thing. Let me, let me say one more thing. Um, you can check out Dark Sounds Music on uh, Facebook. Okay. You know, I, I didn't have links last time. I felt like a fool, you know. So, you know, I'm hooking it up this time. Gotcha. When we drop y'all down, don't leave the green room. Stay there. And then when the show ends, we'll all chit chat for a minute. If y'all oh. don't mind. Rocky, Steve, excellent seeing you, gentlemen. We'll talk to you in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Thank guys. Right on. Thanks. Thank you very Thanks much, guys. See you. And just like that, the grays are going. And now it's just us. Oh, I'm you're, changing and the red right beard. Back. You're changing your background. Yeah. That's a cool background, and I'm so the 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 movie that I did with Ron last uh, or the last couple of days. That's going to be my new background because it's just me with a light and and black in the back. Because you guys have this this cool like I keep on trying to move my head 
to block this light behind me. I yeah, you had a strobe effect going at one point. I thought I was going to have a seizure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I tried to block that. And there, there's Lance. Lance already printed that out. And uh, Tyler, the second you send him something, hey. you've got the stalker scrap. Hey, I'm going. Tyler. No I'm lie. Tyler. Hi, I'm Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tyler. <laughs> That that food coloring didn't come off my head. For look, me. look, it's like this. It goes, it goes. I'm Tyler. I'm Lance's best friend. Oh, oh, look, look, look. There's proof. <laughs> You're my BFF. Sleep <laughs> in factors I'm ten and eleven. I'm Tyler's best friend, and here's some proof. <laughs> Why do you sound like Mr. Hanky? Because I, I don't, I don't do voices. I, I got nothing. How do you? Yes, is Mr. Hanky. <laughs> uh, hey, good times. Oh, good that's times. That's funny. So, Tyler, yes, sir. Well, but we don't want to drop you down. We're just gonna try to figure out another ending. We're gonna, yeah, because we should all have a happy ending together. <laughs> but <laughs> oh my wife! I was being sweet, not dirty. You dirty-minded men. I was being like. No, the women probably think that too. When you okay, say the women get things that way. It's okay. <laughs> men usually think that oh, way. Oh my wife! I'm just meeting. <sighs> We should oh, say goodbye to Tyler. I to show this too. Oh, I got Tyler, a Tyler figurine. <gasps> yes. <laughs> How about that. Can you go in on that, Joe? Awesome. I had to do I it. I go in on that after Make it, you, you just. <laughs> yeah. <make it> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks just like Tyler. Should have been me. Should have been you. <laughs> I, I got my happy ending lights up now. So <laughs> thank you. So you were hashtag happy ending. One of the things Lance realized is he wasn't thanking a few people, so he wanted to do shout outs before we said good night. Okay. Do you remember that conversation? Yeah, that we need to start doing that. But not tonight. Just because I mean we're running over already. <laughs> okay, so y'all be prepared for shout outs next time. Gonna be some yeah. some shout out because we we want we really do want to show appreciation to people. I mean, we really do. So for everybody who is tuning in. I have to do the obligatory, you know, catch us on right YouTube. There. Yeah, down here. <laughs> it's going. Romero in <laughs> Romero Pictures Indie Brigade on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure yes. you click the like, subscribe, and all those buttons, you know. There's like too many damn Everybody subscribe. And it's if so you like us, stuff. just have one. If everybody just had one friend, click yes. Think hit, of where we could go together. Hit that like button. Anything for you, Scotty. We love Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, it's gonna make me not look so special wearing mine Friday night. Thanks. No, you have a you have a different one, and it's yeah, cool. Yours is cool too. <laughs> I got this one coming, but it's gonna be in pink. She's so sweet. Who is Rick Grimes? Rick Grimes <laughs> from Walking Dead. <laughs> You're making it look so easy. That's oh. right. Rick Grimes Producer is, Jesus. Rick Grimes was the cowboy that wanted to kill Negan and all of the Walking Deads. Walking Deads. He, he's he's actually the main nemesis. character. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Ron, I think they were probably confused. Thank you, Matai. <laughs> Who's confused? Wow, Joe, you make that look so easy. You do, Joe. Uh, yeah, right. You make all of this I didn't stumble over right. that whatsoever. This is like herding cats. He's gonna he's gonna screenshot that. He's I proud do, of that. I one. tell Joe that all the time that he herds cats. Yeah, he he makes it look easy. He make does. it look easy. Oh, thank so Tyler, do you want to say where we can find you? What you have going Thanks, on? Jesse. Yes. So I'm gonna be. Uh, so right now, you can on Facebook or Instagram, you can see I'll be right behind you, which is a short that I just did with Ron Purdy. Uh, which I'm really proud of, and uh, it was actually a lot of fun. We, he and he and I talked quite a bit before we actually shot, and I don't think we even took that many takes. It was it was very easy to to work with him. And then I am leaving here in 11 days. I'm going to be uh, shooting some scenes in Butcher's Bluff with the director and creator William N. Stone, and um, you know we'll see what's going to be coming down the pipeline after that. I didn't mean to. I said earlier, Bill Oberst was on the on the uh, set this weekend. Today, yeah, and then last weekend, our buddy Scott Williamson was on set. And I believe, yeah, Scott Williamson was there. And I believe that when I'm there, hopefully Scott's going to be able to show up. I don't know how far away he is, but I believe he's far away. He lives away. in Michigan now, so he's, far <laughs> away. he's in Michigan. Okay, I believe Elsie Holt is going to be there. When awesome. I'm there. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Elsie's a good guy. 
in communist Russia, <laughs> Lance don't end show, Joe end show. <laughs> the hell, Joe? I thought you were leaving, Joe. I'm glad you came back. <laughs> That's funny. I had to do an audition today with a Dutch accent. How does that work? I bailed. I couldn't do it. I either sounded Indian or I sounded German. <laughs> couldn't do it. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> what? What do you mean you couldn't speak Dutch? I, I don't even know. What, I, I don't even. I don't even know if I've met anybody with a Dutch. Maybe accent. you needed to put the braids and the clogs on to be able to do it. Hey, hey, Tyler, hey, Fungu, in the Dutch. Hey, yeah, Cindy, so like, would you like a slushy with that? <laughs> yeah, gold member. You should have done gold member. Is he Dutch? Yes, <laughs> he's from Holland. Oh, you should have thought about gold member. Oh, that would have been great. Oh, Tyler. I don't know. That, I, I would have had a hard time. Isn't that weird? <laughs> no, that wouldn't have worked. Oh man, serious. this is a very serious. Oh, okay, well, you would have laughed. You would have been laughing. Like Stephanie saying yeah. Dutch is not, not easy. easy. Uh, uh no. I gave him a, my normal accent, and I sent I sent a little note to the casting director and just said, "Hey, listen, I apologize. I'm trainable, but I don't want to send you something I'm not proud of." So I just didn't do it. I'm sorry. Wow. You have an accent. Well, I guess we all do, <laughs> right? We all we all do to somebody. To somebody. As a matter of fact, the my my friend that read with me today, who is also uh, an actor, she said that when she has talked to other people from other countries, they say they they said that we sound like we're in the movies because cool. we're movies. Everybody's not even people who have accents sound. What does Lance call it? You speak Amer American. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. She's funny. Ooh. <laughs> She's got jokes. Well, no, but, that's, but but we do. I can I can see what they're saying. Where you know when you watch most most movies that are out there, I mean, that's with the American accent or whatever it is. And so right. I can see that people from other countries are like, you sound like people. Sound you watch like a show and then you hear an interview and you're like, what? Like Andrew Lincoln from Walking Dead, uh, Rick Grimes. He sounds he's oh, yeah. he's British. Yeah. He is straight yeah. up British. And you're yeah. like, what? But so it's easier apparently to take your non-american accent out than to add in someone else's accent to your american accent yeah and i heard it i i heard something that i think robert downey jr was the only actor in the avengers that was not from australia oh wow wow that's nuts and you didn't know all right so we can be found everywhere y'all know you can find lance he's everywhere i'm rarely on social media <laughs> Why y'all are y'all laughing at me again? Are my no, no, out? we're laughing at Lance. We're not laughing at you, Sam. We're not. Are, laughing at the are you stuck on this? He, he's always he's always on he's always on social media. And if Lance is on social media, I am on social media. Unless I'm at work, and then my my reception gets screwed up. So. And if your reception is great, you still shouldn't be on your radio because trains kill. <laughs> no, not on my phone. There's certain times we can be on our phones, and I still am having issues. Uh, I know I'm I very responsible. By the rules. It sounds like I'm domestic. very much by the I rules. I am a rule follower. I <laughs> am too. I don't make the rules. No, I, I go that. by them. What'd you say, Tyler? I said this sounds like a domestic issue. I think that <laughs> Lance and Sam are going off on a. <laughs> I have a great ending for the show tonight, Joe. Is it a happy one? Well, like like I'll give her yeah I'll give her a kiss like that okay and then I'm gonna say this Brian Clegg sucks. <laughs> oh, am I supposed to play the why? We know what the end, the happy ending is to our show. What? Now, Joe knows the happy uh, ending. Are we done? We can be. We love you guys. Love y'all.